I'm curious a little bit more about like that that time when you first got introduced to the words restorative justice, and maybe mm-hmm. that those weren't the first words that were used with you, <laughs> but in this time when you were on the verge of dropping out, um, in as much detail as you'd like to share with us, um, and this global audience of hopefully millions, but <laughs> let's be real, <laughs> hundreds at this point. <laughs> um, uh, what what was going on um and what uh was the shift for you definitely definitely um so part of me and my process of of finding restorative justice was like i think when i first heard the word restorative justice it was the first time i'd ever gone to a school assembly and i was like oh that sounds dope but before i had ever gone to a school assembly i struggled with substance abuse a lot Right. Um, and so that led me into a lot of places. Um, I, I was selling, I, I was consuming a lot of drugs, you know, and that was a really unhealthy time in my life, you know, and, and I think that abuse of substances is, was a manifestation of the way that I was interacting with the world, my upbringing at that point. Right. I, I felt like in a lot of places that I didn't belong, that my voice and story wasn't important, wasn't valued, or that I as a person wasn't important or loved. Right. You know, so in my journey, in that process, I got caught one day at school, actually, in shadow Oakland and all the people who work so hard for these programs, but rather than suspend me or expel me and push me further down that road in the school to prison pipeline, I was lucky enough to be paired with a mentor. They're like a big sister to me right now. Um, but they started, they didn't tell me not to do anything. They didn't tell me I was a bad person. They cared and they listened, right? And so for me, that kind of blew my world up. Like in my head, I, I was thrown back and still hesitant because I wasn't used to it, but stepped into it more and more. And the more and more I uncovered about myself, the more and more I realized how deep these harms are for me and the world around me. And so at that point in my life, in that realization, in that process of unlearning and learning in my journey, I went to a school assembly for the first time. Because I was like, let me be a part of the school community. And, <laughs> and then um, I heard the words were short of justice. And I, after the assembly, I went up to the person who said it. I was like, that's dope. Is there any way I can get involved? And they told me that there was an in-school work experience. So I was working directly with the facilitator at my school and learning from them and holding space on my own eventually. Shout out Ms. Kasum um, for that opportunity, you know. And a side note, actually, uh, after that, I was like, all right, that's enough school assemblies for me. And I missed two of my favorite rappers from the Bay Area. It was um, All Black and Offset Gym. And they were in the auditorium. And they were, uh, that's a whole nother story. But, you know, it's just, it was a shame. It was a shame. So for those of you young people who are listening to this back, sorry, in the future, when you d- you get to go to whole school assemblies again, let that be a lesson. Your favorite rapper may show up. So stay in school, kids. <laughs> that is that's so right, not the message right. that we're trying to get across <laughs> in this workshop, uh, sorry, in this podcast at all. Oh, my goodness. Oh man, this is off the rails already. <laughs> um, that's okay. Um, you, you, so you, you had this experience with this caring adult who was like, mm. "Hey, um, what's going on?" Not mm. like, "What are you doing? What is wrong mm. with you? How dare you?" I know, like, you can't go back and actually like imagine how that would have felt. But from your perspective right now. Um, how would you have reacted differently if that was the case? Definitely. You know, like, I think for me, like, I a few little words and that energy, you know, I think for me, it would have been an extension of the place that I already was. So if I had been met with that, it would have been a big middle finger to really everybody and to continue down that process of, of going further and further away from school and further, further towards something else, you know? Yeah. I think like, it's really important that people listening, I'm not just saying adults, but people listening, um, pause and hear that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, One interaction um, with a young person, it is the difference between someone being engaged in the criminal legal system for a very, very, very long time, um, or being in this place where Griffin is right now, where um, Mm -hmm. college, uh, in college, doing work on a national level with an organization uh, like Amplify RJ. Um, and, you know, these moments can be like, like these moments day to day that you, you mm-hmm. might not think twice about that interaction. Uh, your, your teacher there or your teacher, your, your mentor there, um, I'm sure that wasn't the only interaction that she's ever had with a young person like that. That's something that like is 
is habitual for her. Mm. But um, if we're not always trying to build those habits of taking the time to acknowledge the person and know that there's something else going on under the surface uh, with the person uh, and they're not intentionally trying to be out there um, harming their community and themselves, Mm. um, it can be a really transformative thing. Mm.